Due to some timing conflicts, we weren't able to record our normal session and instead recorded a one shot of Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop is an RPG system set in an alternate 1980s where you play children who solve mysteries in the style of 1980s movies like Goonies or things inspired by them like Stranger Things. Uh, just to introduce everything uh, one more time because, you know, we're starting again. Um, this is Tales from the Loop. Uh, it is currently July, I believe we said it was 9th, 1985. Mm-hmm. Uh Back to the Future has just come out. It is balls hot in uh, Boulder City, Nevada, where the three of you live. Um, here in Boulder City, uh, there is a DARPA project uh, that, that you refer to as the Loop. Um, it is some kind of very large uh, particle accelerator. Um, exactly what it does, you don't really know. Um, this is a slightly different uh, 1980s than you may remember or may not remember, depending on how high you were. Um, <laughs> uh, as, a as, a, different... as a seven-year-old. Yeah, the, the, the discoveries from the loop accelerator, especially the main loop accelerator uh, in Sweden, but as well as this one, um, you know, things like, um, gosh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're called something like automatic, automatic balancing machines. Uh, basically, there are robots they have some degree of, uh, of autonomy. Uh, they're not incredibly uncommon either. Uh, they're not like, you know, you, they don't like interact like normal humans do, uh, but they are around. You might see a robot, you know, doing, you know, heavy lifting or something like that. Um, it's not super weird. There are also these flying machines called magnetrine uh, uh, ships, vehicles. Um, and uh, they're basically, they basically allow heavy loads to fly. And so they're basically used for like shipping. Um, the magnetrine drives do tend to disrupt um, uh, nearby uh, electronics. And so they generally are not used in cities, but it's not uncommon to see them flying around uh, in the countryside. I mean, you guys and, are in the middle of a desert. And they float more than fly, right? Yeah, they basically are, are the, the way it literally works is that they're kind of, it's like a caterpillar drive, but um, in the they air. They walk along the Earth's magnetic field at a very slow rate using the energy from that. So it's energy efficient, but not necessarily very fast. <laughs> yeah, they're slow, but, but can go over land. And so basically they're used for shipping or trucks or other kinds of things. And so they're useful for, um, for that kind of stuff, but they're not... Um, you don't have everybody have a flying car. You don't have one in your backyard or something. Uh, I guess if your you know, father's a truck driver, maybe, but, um, you know, that it's, they're common to see, uh, you know, and also there's a lot of, there's a lot of experiments going on in, um, Boulder City. Uh, so to remind you, the, uh, the world, uh, is full of strange and mysterious things. Um, and, uh, but... You know, your day-to-day life, when you're in school, when you're dealing with your family, all that stuff is very normal. Um, so, uh, and the, the adults uh, tend not to interact with you guys too much. Um, you know, you might, you, you have somebody that you, you care about and that, that uh, is close to you, but they don't believe you if you talk about, you know, a lot of this stuff. Um, and to you guys, each of you has a reason for why um, some of these mysteries appeal to you so much and why you want to learn about them. Um, let's start with, uh, let's start with, let's start with Geneva. So Geneva, um, you have a relatively new um, Macintosh computer. And you got that for um, winning a uh, uh, a contest of some kind. Yes, I did, because I'm the smartest kid in school, and so <laughs> yeah. and I'm like I'm ahead uh, a year in school, and and there was this contest uh, for smart kids, and I went there, and my mother helped to sign me up for it, and then I went there, and there was just a bunch of questions, and I won. 
And nice. now I got this computer and it's awesome. Um, and so you've been you've been uh, playing around with this uh, for much of the summer. Uh, you don't have a lot of friends to hang out with, um, especially because you're younger than everybody. Uh, yeah. Today, however, um, you're at home, but you hear uh, your father talking to a number of coworkers, um, and they're actually really annoying right now uh, because they keep being a lot louder and more obnoxious than, uh, than, um, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of sitting around having a bunch of beers. They're, they're, they're all coworkers, um, you know, from the, the, uh, DARPA facility, um, that, uh, manages these, uh, the loop. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're talking about just like boring work stuff. They're talking about, uh, this uh, this this um, scientist who uh, was recently fired and her um, you know, supposed love affair with this other guy, um, and they're talking about you know just all the various office drama. And every so often, you know, you hear them all kind of laugh. I mean, they're they're not like completely off the walls drunk, but they're having a, a, an adults kind of party, and it's really distracting your your kind of your gaming uh, and your your programming, your computer tinkering. Um, what do you want to What do you want to do about that? Are they on the porch? Um, I'm thinking they're like downstairs. It's pretty hot, uh, so they're they're kind of downstairs in the living room. Your your bedroom might be upstairs. Um, uh, and you know, mm-hmm. I, I suspect that that while dealing with kids is difficult. Um, you can usually deal better with adults, but this is a very much like not the kind of adult situation that, that you're, you're kind of cool with dealing with. Yeah. Um, um, so, you know, you maybe want to get out of the house and look around for somewhere more interesting to, to get away from them. You might even be able to lug your, uh, your Macintosh if you were to kind of put it in a wagon or something and like drag it around or something. Yeah, I um, I would uh, probably attempt to pack it up and take it to uh, um, to the library, maybe. Okay. So um, so yeah, you 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 kind of, you know, carrying it on your own is is difficult, but you're kind of able to to uh, to get it going. You kind of like put it onto some. I don't know if it's like a. Like when they the like a, there's this little wagon that you used to have when you were a kid and you or a smaller kid, um, and you stick it on there and uh, you start making your way towards the library, um, and yeah, your parents, um, your 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 father and your his coworkers are still just kind of laughing and carrying on um, as you make your way into the city. Um, the library is not very far; it's just a couple of blocks. Uh, on your way there, you notice the. Uh, um, the Grand Royale Theater. Um, and you notice something about it. There's two things you notice. First of all, the power in there seems to be on. Um, you know, it was shut down fairly recently, and maybe somebody forgot to turn off the power. Um, you also notice that you're pretty sure you could get in if you kind of snuck in through um, this kind of side entrance. Um, you know, yeah, I've you know done it's that closed before. down. What's that? I've done that before. Yeah, the power is still on, so it might actually be a reasonable place to hook up your computer. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Let's do that. Okay. So yeah, the inside of the thing. This was a uh, this was a vaudeville theater that uh, has this Art Deco style. Um, you know, it's from a time when uh, this was the only place that there was a lot of entertainment in Boulder City. Uh, not really a, a huge town. Uh, but uh, it's recently closed down because of the multiplex that's actually attached to the local mall. Um, uh, so yeah, you make your way inside. Uh, and uh, up in the projection room in particular, you see that uh, the lights seem to be on. And we're going to skip over here. Um, Jenny, what yes. kind of stuff would you be doing during the summer? Are you hanging out with friends? Are you? Um, 
to be honest, it'd probably be hanging out with uh, friends, trying to stay out of the house as much as possible, go okay. and visit my grandma. Um, so yeah, you what kind of where would you hang out with friends? So would you do you go to the mall? Do you hang out at like you know? It would probably yeah. be at okay. the mall. Yeah. So um, so you're gonna go to the mall. Um, and you spend the, the afternoon there hanging out with friends. Um, as you're as you're kind of leaving it in the afternoon, um, mm-hmm. you hear a voice um, that's not one of your friends, and you hear it like directly above you. Uh, All right, um, you don't see anybody there. Uh, there is a you see a pigeon flying away. Uh, and then a minute later, like like a few seconds later, you hear the voice again, and it you could swear it sounds like the pigeon is the one that's talking. I will probably follow okay. the pigeon, but try yeah, to look you, cool you about it. Yeah, you kind of say like, uh, you know, you tell your friends like, hey, I, I got to get going, and they're like, okay, cool. Um, so you follow the pigeon. Um and yeah, you you can hear it um, every so often. It, it's kind of muttering to itself, um, and it's muttering the things that you might kind of expect the pigeon to say, like, oh, I, "I know there were there were some donuts over there. Uh, uh, oh, there was a, there's a half a hamburger out there." Um, and but it's you follow it down, um, and uh, it kind of heads a little bit further in towards the center of the. Uh, of the city, um, you know, the mall is a little bit more towards the outskirts. Um, it's never in the, the like very center. Um, yeah. And you see it kind of fly up and go into the rafters of a large building um, that says Grand Royale outside of it. Uh, you know, you kind of you think that you might be able to get up there if you use the fire escape or you might be able to get into it and, you know, try to get out through a window or something. I'd probably try the fire okay. escape first because I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done right. that before. Um, so let's go ahead and use that as a time to, uh, to do a, a roll. Um, I think this is mm-hmm. just going to be a move roll. So you're going to roll 5d6 okay. for your stats. No, okay. I have failed. So, um, so you start climbing up the fire escape, um, and uh, the bottom rung of the fire uh, escape is actually uh, like there's the ladder that hangs down right from the the fire escape. You try to jump <laughs> up and grab it, uh, but you miss. And when you uh, when you land, you kind of stumble a bit and knock over a trash can. Um, and it's pretty embarrassing. embarrassing. I look around to make sure no one's, look around to make sure no Uh, one saw that. (laughs) Somebody may have seen that, um, because it turns out there was somebody who, uh, you noticed looking out, uh, from one of the second story windows, uh, in the, uh, in the theater. Okay, I push myself okay. flat against the wall. Yeah, you so kind of recognize her. She is somebody who's in your grade, but you've never talked to her. Um, and she's she's younger than the rest of you, and she definitely does not hang out with your crowd. Um, it's all right. I'd barely hang out with yeah, your crowd. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, the okay. pigeons seem to be up there, and with that ruckus... Um, you see a bunch of pigeons fly away and they kind of fly towards the, uh, towards the east. Um, and then Jen. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's the summer. Yeah. But even in the summer, um, I'm still practicing volleyball. You're still practicing volleyball. Yeah. You don't have to, it's not mandatory because they can't make you. No, but I'm going to do that. But you're going to do it. Um, and in fact, your team does meet every so often. Um, and you still practice on your own, right? Yeah. Um, you know, with Jenny C, Jennifer A, and uh, let's see, Melissa. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, 
There's six people on a volleyball team, right? For a normal like, yeah. volleyball. God, I don't remember. Yeah, maybe a Jessica. I forgot Jessica. <laughs> and Definitely maybe a Jessica. Jess. Um, you know who's not here though? Is Christy. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, which is kind of strange. Um, she's she's pretty dedicated to volleyball, you know. And she had told you during the last. You, know, you saw her yesterday as you were you were you know doing your own exercises. Um, she lives like right next door to you. Um, and you don't actually see her there. Uh, your coach actually notices that too. Um, and as your, your volleyball, um, practice wraps up, uh, is your coach a man or a woman? Woman. Okay. As you, with a as mullet. You, with a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Of course uh, you would yeah. be. <laughs> as it wraps up, um, your coach comes up to you and tells you, um, that she's a bit worried that Chrissy didn't show up. Um, and asks if you can go uh, swing by our house. I, I, run, I run my hand through my, my slightly sweaty, sandy blonde hair and say, all right, <laughs> I can do that. All right. And then none of us really described ourselves. <laughs> that is true. Uh, that's okay. Um, we'll do it when we yeah. meet up. It's fine. Rainbow leg warmers. Rainbow leg warmers! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you... you uh, you're going to swing by her house. Um, and uh, when you get there, you open it up and she looks kind of, uh, she's wearing a bandage um, over her forehead, like a big band-aid. Um, she has a number of other little bandages and she looks kind of distraught. What happened? Um, she says, uh, she says, oh, sorry, I missed practice, huh? Um, it's all right. I, it's crazy. I was out running last night. Um, and then this this hawk, I think, just started going nuts. Like it, it pecked at me and attacked me. You know, I managed to, to, to get away from it. Um, but it, it, I, I didn't, they didn't. They don't attack people, right? That, that's, that's I, I crazy. Wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Did, did the hawks get rabies? Would I know about this? I wouldn't know about rabies. She's too dumb. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could say that. Do hawks get rabies? Do hawks get rabies? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I mean, are, I... Are you all right? I mean, I got pretty scratched up, but um, I, I'm okay. I'm just... <laughs> And she kind of looks outside and, and looks around and she's like, I just, I just need a little time to, to, to get myself back together. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm going to like pat her on her shoulder and say, you take all the time you need. Yeah. I, uh, thanks. Um, and she kind of goes back in. She, she's trying to be, you can tell she's trying to be polite, but she was pretty rattled and um, closes the door like she was, you know, pretty, pretty afraid of it. Um, let's go ahead and continue the scene with you two. Okay. Have you have you been introduced at all yet? I don't know. Do you know each other? Okay, uh, Geneva. Mm. I think you probably know of her. You don't know her. You may or may not know her personally, but you you know who she is, right? Is she in the computer club? No, she's definitely not in the computer club. Then I probably don't know her. Well, not personally, but you know, you've seen her around school. Uh, mm. And it sounds like before you knew her reputation, right? Oh, that girl. Everyone knows my reputation, oh. that girl. And you just saw her trying to jump up to the fire escape and uh, m missing and knocking over a bunch of trash cans. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking out the window and I'm giggling to myself watching this. And then I just yeah. shake my head and I turn back to my um to the table that I found that I put my uh my computer on and I go back to uh leafing through the manual. All right. Um Jenny. I I want to get okay. those buttons. Um, so you start going down the the kind of alleyway that's next to the uh the, the theater um, 
-hmm. And the first thing you find is not those pigeons, but you see a number of other pigeons and sparrows and they are dead. There's like, there's like four of them on the ground here. I am probably not surprised. A little bit graced out. Yeah, I mean, you've seen like, um, you know, there are dead birds sometimes, right? But this is a lot more dead birds in a, in a certain area than you, you've ever been, uh, you know, you've ever had. I mean, I'm assuming it's some kind of psychopath playing games with birds because that's what young psychopaths do i'm assuming um i look i look up at the building very very sketchily uh you uh, see a a kind of flickering glow from the second story up where the projection room would be hmm it's actually not exactly where the projection room is because i wouldn't have that the light but there's like a there's like a little hallway outside the projection room and the, the door to it is actually still open because it's really stuffy and, and uh, dusty in there. Oh, so the door's actually open. Well, the door on the saying. side, you've noticed, is actually cracked open. Um, and you, uh, uh, Then I'm going to okay. head into that door. Yeah, so you are you, you go and enter the Grand Royale. Um, you know, this mm-hmm. leads to kind of... This is actually like the fire exit for the... Uh, for the main theater. Um, and there's a, you can tell that, that there's probably a little hallway that leads up to the, um, leads to uh, stairs that lead to the projection room. I am going to go up the stairs and I'm going to go into the projection room because I know someone's there. <laughs> yeah, so so in there is Geneva. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys what to say to each other because it's up to you two. Yeah. What are you doing in here? I'm just... I'm doing my things with my computer. I saw you. Oh, 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 okay. You saw me. That's fine. Yeah, you fell. Oh, no. I don't suppose you've ever done that before in your life. No? Okay. Um... Why have you got a computer in an abandoned, like, cinema? That's none of your business. It's my computer and I want it. Is it your cinema, though? No, is it yours? No, but I didn't bring my property up here and steal electricity, though, did I? No, you just brought your stink with you. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) look, if if you want to start like this, you can. But I will bury you if this is what you want to start. <laughs> don't don't write ke- checks that your mouth can't <laughs> cash. Okay. Ooh, ooh Clea getting serious. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny um, gets serious. Jenny's got a reputation. Oh yeah, to, Jenny sure does have a I reputation. Guess, unmaintained. <laughs> I um. Do Do you want to see? It's new. Sure. And it's got sure. a little book with it. I've not actually seen, like, a, mm-hmm. a little book. I look at the book. It's a big, massive <laughs> manual. <laughs> it's it's actually not you. Okay. It's like one of those booklets that has, like, the rings through it as the back. Oh, yeah, that's that's spiral probably bound. way too big for, for, for Jenny to worry <laughs> um, about. You hear voices from outside and downstairs. Voices? <clears throat> Yeah. Shh, do you hear that? Yeah. Um, Are they your friends? I don't have any friends. <laughs> oh, um, Snoopy. <laughs> I'm just going to pat so Jenny on the head. So let me, like, outside the, uh, the projection room is a balcony. That's where you would go around. And it also leads, you could, from the projection room, you can actually see down from that balcony, you can see down into the lobby. Um of the uh of the theater and that's where the the noises seem to be coming from the voices i'm gonna sneak my uh, my cheerleader ass over to the, the edge of the balcony okay. and just sort of peek over um geneva are you gonna join her um no i'm gonna put my like i'm gonna make sure that my computer is safe really and okay. i'm just gonna like i'll glance over her shoulder 
But okay. I'm not going to flat out look down. Yeah, so down at the bottom, you see more pigeons. Um, and here, you actually see... You hear them talking. And then you hear them kind of going... Mm, 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 mm. And then you see, like, three of them together picking up a large bucket of popcorn. <laughs> and, you know, oh. what's actually in the bucket is, like, unpopped kernels and, like, you know, straight crumbs of, of things. So it's not, like, newly popped popcorn. But it's like they gathered all of them. And then all together, they're kind of lifting <laughs> that bucket of popcorn and uh, flying it out through the the uh, the door that you had opened up to get in. Um, like, together as a team, they picked up this bucket of popcorn and put a bunch of popcorn in it and took off out the door. Mm. Oh, that is that strange. Right. The last thing I think was Christy said she was kind of rattled and closed the door. Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, I feel like Jen would just take a walk. Okay. Yeah, so you take a walk. She'd put on she'd she'd have her like uh her snapback to cover her from the sun. She has a fairly like loose fitting white shirt to reflect sunlight. Mm-hmm. And is just gonna just gonna wander. Okay. Um You see She doesn't want to go home. She doesn't want to go home. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Um you you start wandering around, um and then you see the same sight that they just saw a moment ago of several pigeons um, working together to carry away a bucket of popcorn. And, what the? And they're, they're, they all, they kind of seem to be chuckling to themselves too. Like, not like a normal, like pigeon cooing, but like. <laughs> <laughs> demonic bird chuckles. It's, it's even less demonic. It's even more cartoonish. Like they seem really pleased with themselves <laughs> to be able to do that. I think cartoonish chuckles <laughs> coming from a bird would be demonic. That's true. Um, and you, you what are they like baby giggles? Uh, oh, that'd be really creepy. <laughs> no, they're not like baby giggles. They actually, <laughs> I'm actually thinking more of like uh, uh, good feathers from uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Animaniacs. God damn it! I'm not going to do oh, those voices, I mean... but you know, uh, that was my least favorite skit on Animaniacs. It, Every time that came out, it's a up, very thin concept. Oh my god. Well, also, what kid would have watched fucking Goodfellas? I think it was everybody's least favorite skit. Yeah, that's true. That is not a, that is not a movie for kids. I mean, Slappy and uh, Skippy, that's like, nobody knows what the, She's talking about, like, old vaudeville acts and stuff. Like, who knows this? Anyway, let, let us... Um, so, yeah, you, you see that they seem to have... That, pop, that, pile, ugh, that bucket of popcorn seemed to have come from the Grand Royale Theater, uh, which has been closed for several months. And is the... Uh, assuming that there's no way I'd be able to follow the birds because they're birds, I would... You could. The they're, they're, they're not going terribly fast. They're carrying a big bucket. It's a laden sparrow. Um, <laughs> yeah, laden pigeon. Laden pigeon. Uh, I think I think Jen would follow the birds. Okay. So you're going to start following the birds. Um, Jenny, are you going to try to follow the birds? I think Jenny would totally follow the birds. Because right. she's been following them this whole time. All right. Um, so y- you walk out the theater, and I don't know if Geneva's going to come with you. Um, Geneva, you're going to go with them? Um, well, while this is all going on, I've basically put my computer... Like, there's this indentation on top, mm-hmm. and I, I've lifted it off the table and put it... Technically... In this era, there would already be Macintosh-sized carrying cases, and I think they only weigh like fifteen or sixteen well, pounds, so it would be carryable by a. Yeah, but not really. By to, me. to like go around everywhere as, as like as like a backpack, maybe. Um, but what this do you do find? specifically has an indentation, though, to be carried. Yeah, you actually find something in the projection room, um, and you can actually add this to your items. Uh, you find a key. Oh, I do. You think? Yes. Oh. Where do I put it my items? It looks like there was a spare key of... It looks like this was a spare key to the projection room in particular. Oh, my hideout text is gone, by the way. Mm, oh, uh, items. Yeah, mine oh, disappeared, yeah. What's too. it called? Really? Just a key. Key. It's a key to your hideout. So you could lock the room with your oh. computer in it. Yeah. And then I mean, I, as the game a... master, well, I'm kind of obligated not to do things like steal your computer. 
in fact, even if it's stolen, your iconic item is not supposed to be, I'm not supposed to, I can't take your iconic item. I can kind of like temporarily like keep you from using it, but uh, you always get it back. But uh, the I, only I, exception is if you change your iconic item. But I wouldn't ever leave the computer behind, I think. Well, maybe, no. maybe if. But this uh, is a weird situation. Maybe when it's when it's when it's your your actual hideout, when you know it's your hideout, maybe yeah. you would then. Well, I guess. I guess. I just since I have a key now. I. I mean, you can come back and get it later. That's 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 yeah. what I'm trying to do. Is like I'm trying to tell you, you can come back and get it later, and it'll still be here, because there are some talking birds taking away a bucket of popcorn so if i add an item it also requires me to use a skill or an attribute no. yeah uh, whatever just add in your notes just, yeah just put in your notes then oh because this isn't really a skill item it doesn't really have anything to do with that oh okay okay um hmm okay so um yeah so you lock up and follow uh jenny out the door um, and Jenny, as you're, you're following them, you kind of basically almost run into, uh, Jen. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I Hi, said... uh, Jenny, what is your last name again? Daniels. Jenny Daniels. Just, you can call me JD if you want to. I'd really rather you didn't, but, um. <laughs> Why do you say that? I, I, I'm assuming that all her friends called her JD. And she just doesn't like oh, okay. it. Right, Jen, Jen just uh, doesn't understand and then has like a beaming dumb person smile on her face. That is somehow charming. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking. And, and she's probably she's probably like seven inches taller than you two because she's on the volleyball team. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to take a quick glance back at, uh, is it Jenny, Geneva? Jenny, Geneva. Geneva. Um, and just notice her. Um... Sorry, I I have a thing that's going on right now that I'm just I'll I, I'm gonna just walk past her and just make a kind of like a just excuses of just because I'm not sharing the fact that there are talking pigeons because I know that's insane. are you following those talking pigeons or those <laughs> those pigeons carrying popcorn because I haven't heard them talk. Um. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they. they they, they're carrying a bucket of popcorn? I heard them talk. That's a bit weird. They were talking. I know it. Because I heard them. Okay, say that they were... Say, uh, we heard noise. Pigeons just go gobble, gobble, gobble all the time. Maybe. They <laughs> go, Raku, Raku. But these guys didn't go, Raku, Raku. They went, like, talking. So they seem to be flying kind of towards the northeast. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna charge off after I, them. I'm also going to charge off after them, probably faster than Jenny. Yeah, they're they're not terribly fast, uh, but you do lose sight of them a few times. Uh, it looks like they're actually kind of heading a little ways out of town. I'm out of breath um, already. Halfway <laughs> down the street, I'm out of breath. Do you, do you have an inhaler? <laughs> okay, I'll I'll take the uh, like the backpack that she's carrying. No, no, I left the computer. Hold I locked her. the door. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you. Okay, you might you might just need to carry her. You could probably point. go back and get uh, bikes if you want. Bikes. As long as one of you doesn't lose. Uh, do you have a bike? I guess I do. Bicycle. Yeah. I, I I'm sure I have one, but I think that I'd be the one to keep up with it. Okay. Yeah, I I probably would be. A, I mean, I'm. I'm pretty fit okay. wouldn't i so, have like a bicycle think, with like one of those baskets in front that would be perfect to carry my computer around possible, as well. yeah with that streamers that's yeah you've got a basket with streamers on the hand that handles with streamers <laughs> on the end that's yes that's your bike. and we are just like four weeks away from the release of pv's big adventure oh my god the greatest okay, bicycle story okay. of all time what? as as a, as a brit i've never seen that movie oh you should watch it it's really fun oh it's so good um, yeah, but the character of Pee Wee is really fucking annoying. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's but he's supposed to be. He's he's supposed to be he's supposed to be a giant child. He is. But I'm not eight anymore. Honestly, it gets better when you're older. It actually does. It's it because it. We're getting way off track <laughs> here. <laughs> like the first when I was a kid, Pigeons. I didn't realize it. Like when they go through the Alamo, and it's literally just like white people racism talking about this is the Alamo. You know, like like oh my god, and. Mm. 
It's so good. Yeah. And then there's the waitress who's obviously physically abused and he doesn't understand any of it. And uh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds brilliant. So, um, <laughs> it's such a good dark comedy for adults. Yeah, it is good. Um, so actually, if you, this seems to be sloping downhill. Uh, you can kind of actually follow the highway um, 93 uh, down towards Lake Mead. Um, they seem to be heading in that general direction. Uh, I always knew there was something wrong with that fucking lake. <laughs> they're actually gonna you're gonna you're gonna swing by um, as you kind of track them. Um, they're not going too fast and they're pretty easy to spot because they are carrying a big like movie theater bucket. Um, but even so you still have to kind of you know watch out in particular um, you have to make a a uh, a circle as you kind of approach the the reactor cooling towers, um, which there's three of them, and there um, there's a big fence around it. Uh, but you can kind of follow the Lakeshore Road through it and um, continue on. Um, as you get closer and closer to the beach, um, this is a, a lake beach; it's not at the ocean. Um, mm -hmm you see them kind of fly up and out of sight into a... Uh, how far away are they? How far away? Uh, okay, at the closest point, how how close do we get to them physically? Hmm. I'd say that even at the closest, it'd probably be like 100 feet because they're flying. Do I think that presumably I have a volleyball with me and you could spike a volleyball pretty far? Do I think I could hit them or the popcorn ball with my volleyball from where I am using volleyball uh, powers? Do you want to try it? The magical I would like to try this. Yeah, that, that, is, that is definitely a, a force uh, roll. Okay. All right. So I have, so it's the number of points I have in body plus the number I have in force. Yeah, so eight. However, however. Seven, because it's five plus two, because I only have two in front. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, however, I am going to make this a two success thing, because you are trying to hit something pretty difficult. Uh, I only got one success. Okay, because, yeah. So, so yeah, you, you get kind of, kind of close, um, and they do notice you, uh, and they, they kind of fly a little bit farther. But, yeah, you, you spike that volleyball, and it, it, like, comes close, but not quite. I mean... You're, you're hitting a, a moving target that's yeah. small with a volleyball uh, from, from 100, 100 feet, feet away. So. What is wrong with you? <laughs> why why would you do that? They obviously stole your popcorn, right? No. They're just birds that shouldn't be able to carry popcorn carrying popcorn. <laughs> oh, that is kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny is just going she just, to She just goes back to her beaming her smile. Seconds, her charming just, smile. You're just like... He's just gonna go. What the fuck? With her is like wrong with her like people? sun dappled cheeks that have little bits of uh, of cute freckles coming through. So like, um, you see a uh, a rocky cliff overlooking the islands um, in the middle of the lake, um, and the birds fly up and uh, seem to stop there, uh, out of sight at the top of this cliff. Um, can you ping this on the map? Yeah, I can ping this on the map. They can't see this. Use your imagination. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah, it's in this area. Um, yeah, that's why I was telling you, because like, you guys were up here somewhere, and you ended up down yeah. here. Um, so we, we've been where? walking for... Several miles, honestly. Like two miles, two or three yeah. miles. We started but, uh, where? I didn't see where we started... At Boulder City. Yeah, Boulder City's down here on the map. Oh, right. Okay. Um, you pass the reactor here mm. and uh, kind of track the birds around here. Okay. Um, okay. I think you... So to describe it, we, we walked mostly along a uh, U.S. State Route 93 mm -hmm. um, up towards Lake Mead from the town. Yeah. I think it's... And we passed the cooling towers of the main reactor. Yeah, I think it's actually down towards Lake Mead because it... Well, yeah, that's correct, because water would usually be in the town if that were not correct. the case. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I'm not being pedantic. It just kind of... 
up as in it north. It just sort of happens. The pedantry. I, I was riding my bicycle <laughs> uh, with them while they were running, yeah, yeah. but my wheel is a bit wobbly, so I had to stop every once in a while and kick it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jen looks pretty okay, but uh, Jenny's uh, definitely uh, pretty out of breath. Um, ah, shucks! And uh, I'm winded. I, I, I'm, I mean, you're pretty. You're 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 in good shape, but it is a summer day, and you just walk two miles at a pretty brisk pace. Um, but yeah, you, you've you've reached it, and at the top of the cliff, there is a. You can see birds flying to and from this area. Um. And every so often, you can kind of hear them. Talking? Are they going, oh, fuck, yeah, corn, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. that's yum. what I feel like birds would be saying. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> that's the sound birds make for everybody. Yum, else. yum, yum. Okay. I, I would <laughs> like to listen in on these birds. Sure. Okay, yeah. um, do a... Hmm. Actually, no. Well, let's just have this go out. So you guys, you sit there quietly... Um, and listen to the birds. Um, and uh, a few minutes later, you hear um, something that sounds kind of like a war cry. And uh, a seagull uh, flies towards the, the nest at the top of the cliff. Um, and, you know, a scuffle kind of ensues. Um, and uh, you can hear them like shouting at each other, like uh, the way that they talk. Fuck off, off my cliff. <laughs> yeah, basically. You what, mate? <laughs> yeah. In it, bro. Come and have a go if you figure out no. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> and uh, their voices sound kind of weird and metallic, like like robots almost. Oh, um, robots. Yeah, or like those voice boxes. You know what I mean? Or like a vocoder, yeah, like, even. Mm, okay. Um, and sometimes they make trippy noises, but yeah. So the the pigeons kind of work together as a group and drive off the uh, the seagull. Um, but the seagull seems angry, and it's like, "I'll get you! I'll get you!" And he's, uh, he 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 uh, swears to come back with his mates and uh, and get them. Um, so the, the pigeons seem pretty, uh, you can hear them, them chattering to each other about how they, they, they seem nervous and, uh, and uh, you know, that they, they're going to have to beef up the defenses of the nest. Uh, hmm. Hey, pigeons. <laughs> okay, I was waiting for that. Can you I was hear like, me? <laughs> someone smarter than me would do that. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Uh, the pigeons can hear you, and they seem to 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 start circling around. Um, they don't respond, right? And in fact, as they start circling around, you notice that the uh, the group of um, uh, the seagull comes back with uh, several others, and you know the vicious fights start to ensue, and. Um, you know, every so often, one of those pigeons get gets totally knocked out of the sky and uh, taken down by the seagulls. Uh, Are they landing anywhere near uh, us? Not so much landing as much as splatting on the ground. Um, okay, I'm going to say, uh, pigeons, come speak, come to us. We can protect you. I'm not going to protect some goddamn birds <laughs> from some goddamn sky rats. Uh, <laughs> no, fuck it. I'll do it uh, then. Don't you want to know what the answer is to this? Go ahead and try a cart roll. Oh, okay. I'm assuming that's a oh, body sorry, roll. Sorry, uh, charm. Sorry. Oh, a charm. Yeah. Okay. That's two successes. Oh. That's pretty good. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, let's see. The pigeons... Okay, the pigeons start to fly down. Um, a couple of them start to fly down in your direction, and others like, no, no, don't trust her. Uh, don't break rank. And then... Uh, it just, it looks like it, the situation is getting really chaotic up there. Um, so it looks like some of them want to trust you, but if they try to turn around and fly down towards you, the seagulls will will uh, go after them. They, they kind of, they hear you. 
Um, but they don't they don't seem to be able to get to you right now. Oh, oh okay. Um Did I did I manage to pick up my volleyball? Sure. This is okay. what I was going to ask you to do. Can I can I try and kick it again? All right, punt it at the fuckers. Spike it. Mostly just to disrupt everything. Okay. All right. Uh, so you you gonna try to get one of the gonna like aim it at the seagulls, or are you gonna? I would try to aim it at the seagulls, but if not, then just mass chaos is is appropriate as okay. well, just to cause them to scatter. Still seven. Uh, it's, yeah. yeah, it's the same. It's still force roll. Oh, uh, three successes. Okay, there you go. Um, yeah, you were a lot closer this time, and this is a big mass of birds. So, um, yeah, you knock it up into the air, uh, into the uh, into the group of seagulls, um, and a couple of them dodge, but one of them just gets smacked directly out of the sky, and while it's stunned, it just crashes to the ground, um, and the rest of the seagulls scatter, um, at least for now. Um, the pigeons, meanwhile, uh, look down at you. Um, and... I forget, which ones were the robots? Uh, you would notice that both of them could talk, and both of the voices were sounding kind of metallic. The pigeons. Uh, but they did sound different. Like, pigeons and, and seagulls sounded different in the way that they talked. Um, oh. Oh, sorry. So I'm I'm just going to ask the pigeons on that are just crowding around me if they're okay or need help. Um. Okay. So what's what they do is most of them kind of head back into the nest where it's safe, um, and like two of them kind of kind of look around you. Um, and, uh, one of them flutters down from the top of the nest and drops, uh, a, uh, a kernel of popcorn into your hand oh, and then thank they you. fly off back up to the top of the nest. Um, so it seems like it, it was rewarding you for, for your, uh, your assistance um, I think I just got paid by a pigeon. <laughs> you did in popcorn. Um, pigeon popcorn payment. <laughs> Are they pirate pigeon popcorn? Yeah. So they, they are fucking now. <laughs> so uh, pilfered pillages. So you do hear them. You, you do hear that they're not talking anymore. Um, you know, you you were. They definitely. They felt like. You did kind of give a, a friendly aura, but they still are very wary of humans and aren't really sure how to respond. Um, I'm. Mm. Well, I didn't. Would I have anything like food wise? Would I have like a granola bar? Well, I mean, or something? I, already, I, I might have one as well. They already. Um, they already uh, paid you in some of their food. No, oh, right. Okay. So it'd just be rude, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean... Um, oh, okay, what I'll do tomorrow is I'll open up the door to the, the, the popcorn house again. The popcorn house? <laughs> Are you shouting that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, all right. So do any of you want to check out the top of the cliff or do you, are you going to go? Or it, How climbable does it seem to be? Uh, how walkable? It's definitely a... Climb. I would I would consider climbing this if it doesn't look too absurd. Okay. Um I mean it's not like a completely sheer cliff, but it is it would require um you either need to do a move roll or a sneak roll to kind of get up there. Uh, it, it would be a move roll. Okay. Oh shit, zero successes. Zero successes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I rolled eight dice. And got zero successes. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, uh, you do have a couple of things, but let's let's. It probably doesn't seem like the best time to to use up your special stuff. Um, okay. So, uh, you this hills unclimbable. 
It's not. <laughs> it's not that it's unclimbable. It's that um, the pigeons spot you. Oh. And they, and start, they start circling to, like, around. Running. Like it was one thing when you were being whatever, but you did knock a uh, a. Uh, you did, you know, throw a volleyball at them the first time, uh, mm. and you did. Now you're trying to climb up to their nest. So they, they definitely. They were they were happy that that uh, you helped them before, but that that has kind of run out, and they are now wary again. I'm gonna say something like, "Hey, I was the one who got the pigeon. Why didn't I get any popcorn?" <laughs> the seagull. Seagull. The seagull. <laughs> the, the sky rat. Uh, they don't seem to respond. They're they're mm-hmm. actually a little too on alert now. Uh, how, what do you want to do? You know what? Let's just open the theater tomorrow and see. Oh if yeah! We can... By the way, here's a here's a here's a um a thing you can do sometimes. Uh, if you fail a roll, you can push yourself at the uh, expense of suffering a condition. So, so what you're saying is, I could do this again with five successes, rolling eight dice, and hope that again I don't somehow <laughs> hit the very bottom of the 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 tier here. Well, you would you would suffer it afterwards, probably. Uh, oh, you, you're guaranteed to take the complication. Yeah. Uh, basically, hold on. Let me let me pull it up here. You can re-roll, uh, and you just describe what you do to push yourself, and then you have to check a condition. Okay. So All you, right. I think I'll do this. Okay. I'm angry. You angry? Okay. Because I didn't get any popcorn. I'm supposed to like. Okay, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> supposed to exhausted, pissed off about. Well, exhausted seems like it would make would sense nev- in this case. But... You would never. You would never eat it. I mean, I would never eat it. <laughs> Jen will eat it. Trust me. That's actually <laughs> the only reason I want to do this. Is so right. that she can eat year old popcorn. <laughs> Should I roll again with the same numbers? Uh, I think you have to lose one for the condition. Okay. So seven. All right. Two successes. Okay. Okay, so this time you managed to climb up uh, to the top of the, the thing. Uh, the pigeons are scattered, but you do find their nest there. Um, it's mostly filled with a bunch of junk. Uh, like pigeon crap. And uh-huh. I'm actually also literally pigeon crap. Like um, wire, like picked up wires and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, you can do a comp, an investigate check as well. Investigate is mined, so yeah. that would be, and I, my condition still applies, so it'd be one. Whew, okay, one success. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you're pretty pissed off, uh, but you do manage to, um, you do manage to find something in the the room, rubble, and it isn't like like you lift up that bucket of popcorn, and you find a few like you know stray kernels and stuff, which uh, I take one of and pocket. Okay, you take you take some some you know some old maids, uh, <laughs> but underneath that you actually see that there is a you notice a little reflection of a piece of uh, metal. It's mostly rusted. Um. But it's labeled um, IEX dash four Z three two. Four three. I E X dash four Z or Z three two. Okay. All right. I grab it and okay. then I head back down. All right. Um, is it is it just like a single piece of metal like it came off of something or is this a thing? Is this like a It looks like it it came off of something. It looks like it okay. may have actually been a uh um I don't want to say like a label, but what would be what would be the term for a label that's made out of metal? I don't even the the metal label things like the, yeah. the, the stamped Tag. out where you have the stamps that you sort of Yeah, exactly. The, that's what it looks through like through to make the thing. Yes. Okay. Um and it looks like it was a, a bit of that. It's just a piece that was kind of shinier, but is uh, it's pretty rusted now. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that, that's the main thing you find other than stuff that is literally, you know. All right. I grab it and I take it down and I, and I show it like, they had this thing. Does this make any sense? Um, no, is it like a dog tag? Comprehend? Comprehend would be the check if somebody wants to try. 
Yeah, I can do that. That is definitely not going to be me. That? Yeah, I can do that. But I still don't have an idea of what this might be, like, in my mind even. I don't know what it looks like. Is it like a dog tag? Um, not unlike a dog tag. It's bigger. Okay. Well, I'll make a comprehend check, sure. Three successes. Okay. Um, yeah, you actually, you have an idea. Um, not because of what it's made out of or anything like that. Embossing tape. Okay, embossing if tape. If it's used to those little, like, the, the stamped out plastic and metal things that you, you use, use like this handheld thing that you spin and then you crunch it and then it sort of okay. pops it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the format that this follows is actually the format um, that magnetrine ships use. The what now? Um, magnetrine ships oh, yeah, are yeah. the flying ships. Yeah. Um... And yeah, and so that that uh, this seems to be the the identification number for a magnitude ship. Um, it was probably somewhere on the ship, and you know, not there anymore. But uh, it's gotten picked up. Okay. Um. Uh, a few hundred feet away, you actually notice something, Jenny. Yeah. Uh, you see somebody. Uh, guys, do you see that guy? Actually, it's not a guy. Uh, that thing? It's a girl. Uh, uh, do, you see, do you see that girl? Um, she's kind of looking through a set of binoculars, and when she notices you, um, she rides off on a bike. I am going to run after her. Okay. Um... Where are you going? There's a girl on a bike staring at us through binoculars. It's what, creepy. What, would I recognize her from this distance? What kind of age she is? That kind of thing. Uh, she looks like she might be well. Okay, from her like height and general build, she looks like she might be older, but she's you're you're taller because you're barbell. Yeah. Okay. But uh, she looks like she's probably a, a little bit older than you guys, like a teenager. She's wearing um. She was wearing actually fairly, fairly cool clothes. Um, as in temperature, or as in as in stylish, hip. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course, I wouldn't One recognize word that. that I never However, used in the eighties. However, Jenny might recognize the clothes. As being I mean, hip. Jenny probably would recognize the clothes as being cool clothes. Well. But um, you would it would be what a it, what a relatively fashionable uh, teenager might wear. That's all. Shell suit. Like you don't have to know what it is to know that kind of thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So. And I don't think I'd be we'd be able to catch up to anyone on a bicycle. I would. Uh, she has a bike. It, I have a bicycle. Yeah. I mean, it's got a wobbly wheel and stuff, so. <laughs> Well, so what you're saying best, is that Jen should steal your bike. So, at best, <laughs> did um, she? Did she steal you're my bike? You're probably not likely to be able to catch up to her oh. running. Um, however, uh, there's not a lot to the south, kind of. Um, right? You you were you were here in like this area, mm-hmm. and so she's heading off in this direction. So she's heading towards Hoover Dam, is what you're saying? Uh, maybe. What else would be in that area, in, in that general direction? Obviously the DARPA facility, but a teenager on a bicycle yeah. is not going to the DARPA facility. Not sure. There's mountains in that direction. Um, There are mountains in that direction. And there's there's this thing called the Foxtrot Gate. Uh, Yeah, I think that's actually underground, but yeah. yeah. Um, so... Yeah, you don't know of anything offhand. Um, there's some scattered houses along the highway. Uh, so, uh, hmm. 
why do I even care about any of this? <laughs> I have yet to well, figure out why I care about any of it. I, I, I'm, uh, what, what is your drive here? What is why your drive here? Well, I mean, I'm fascinated by technology, so that's all I have. And so far, I so have not have been robot, encountering... super intelligent robot birds? Sure. <laughs> uh, okay, anything you want to do before you leave? Yes, the, I uh, want to catch a bird and take it apart. That's that's well, what I want. You don't to do. actually need to the catch birds. one. There's a there's a dead seagull. Okay. Oh. I want to grab it right. and take it apart. Okay. Um, if it is not bloody, <laughs> uh, it's definitely bloody. Um. Oh, so it's not like so okay. it's not a robot. Then I'm not interested. It actually isn't a robot. No. Oh well. Um, I'll look at it and see that it's not a robot and move on. So that's like, what if it's like speaking? yeah? What if it's like robot parts, like a like a little like neck. Loop thing. Does it have a voice box uh, with any do description? A, do a tinker check. A tinker check? I think it's that. Yeah, t- tinker. Two successes. All right. Uh, so it's pretty bloody, which is pretty glo- gross. Um, but you see something um, in there. I'm going to grab my volleyball now. Okay. You grab your volleyball. Uh, <laughs> you see something kind of uh, shining uh, in the, the, the pigeon corpse near the head. Actually, Seagull corpse. Definitely in the head. Mm, like in the head. Yeah, like uh, like in there. It's kind of gross. Uh if you point it out to Jenny, Jenny will do it. It's gross, but it's shiny and it seems to be tech related, so I guess I'll just poke it with my finger and kind of okay so um, um i'm kinda, so you kind of at poking it. it and like picking at it yeah that would be the thing i'm picking at it so jenny you see her poking and picking at this the seagull um what are you doing um it's there's something in there look like bones no it's like metallic kind of Oh, 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 for the love of Pete, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dig through the bird. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you find, uh, you find something that looks... Jenny ain't squeamish. Yeah, mm. you find something that looks, uh, yeah, that, that's, I, I like that scene, though. I like that scene of, of you just kind of, like, just shoving, just kind of, like, pushing it out of the way and, like, sticking your hand in there. Um, so, yeah, you reach in and you find something weird in there. Uh, it's a small, uh kind of square shaped object uh, that has a number of little prongs, uh, metallic prongs on the bottom. The top is actually pretty um, dark. Um, it seems to be made out of metal or maybe uh, ceramic. Um, is it like a printer you, it, plate type thing? Uh, it would be more like a microchip. Right, yeah. Okay. So it's there's like a little microchip inside it. It's very small. Let me have that. I'm gonna hand it over to yeah, Geneva. Yeah, let, let me look at yeah, that. Yeah, you can you can take it. It's yeah, fine. you have acquired I'm a just bloody gonna, microchip. When, she, when I pass it over to uh, her, I'm gonna make sure that I get blood on her thing on her hand. Uh. <laughs> so I yeah. come over and say, "I dropped the ball." Did you get it back? Yeah. Oh, that's all right then. Um, okay, so you so together you, uh, at the. Uh, the cliffside, you've managed to find a couple of pieces of evidence. Um, by now, it's getting kind of a late uh, late afternoon. Um, so I don't know if you want to go back into town or... I'm going back to my uh, computer. I'm going to investigate this this chip that I found. I'm, I'm holding it up. In, that you found. In front of okay. my... In front of my face. I found it. I can't help it that you needed to dig through a dead bird. The fact that you didn't need to dig through a dead bird is what's amazing to me. If you find something like that. Where are you taking it? I'm taking it to my computer and see if there's a way that I can maybe uh, read out uh, if there's any data on this. All right, then I'm coming with you. I don't know how I'm going to read out a computer chip in in 1985 with a... Well, whatever. (laughs) But sure, let's go back to the cinema. You're a nerd. You should be able to do it. Yeah, I'll just build a robot. It's fine. 
<laughs> I, I also think well somebody's managed to so <laughs> God damn it what's that Jen oh I also think we should go back to the the hideout mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, spend some time in there a scene taking care of each other to heal conditions <laughs> uh, are you feeling broken okay yeah I'm feeling angry you, uh, how do you how do you know each other um now I know that Geneva just met the other two uh or has talked to the other two the first time what about the you other two do you know each other oh we 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 cheer at their games occasionally oh. yeah and i figure that jen being a jock kind of knows everybody okay and as part of a team doesn't really forget people's names that, is that true. kind of thing you actually do have contact as one of your skills yeah um uh okay whereas uh, i actually go out of my way not to deal with um them and their like group of people uh at school like mm-hmm. that, they are definitely not my type of people. I am part of the computer club, and um, like I, I do nerd things. I mm-hmm. don't hang out with popular people or jocks. All right. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's have. Uh. So you make it back to the. Uh, to the hideout. Um. At the grand. Uh, the grand royale. And. Still- Upset at those goddamn birds. <laughs> oh, okay. First Why they hurt. Chrissy? First bird hurts Chris, Christy. Yeah, Christy. Hurts Christy, and then uh, uh, just storming and pacing back and forth. Oh, okay, I think you need to uh, just take a breath here. I mean, let's be let's be clear. You're pissed at birds. Okay, and. Whilst I understand that birds may have hurt Christy, it wasn't the birds that we saved. So effectively what you're saying is you're pissed that birds didn't give you a popcorn piece. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I mean, I mean, why are you pissed at this? I don't know. Okay, so... Maybe we should probably let the pissed offedness go. Remember that we can get the birds on side. And once we are friends with the birds, then I don't know what's going to happen that they'll be on our team. Because they already kind of like me. And if you give them popcorn, they'll kind of like you too. Um. Okay, so uh, go ahead and roll a lead. Roll. <laughs> Roll lead. lead. All of us, or? It's two successes. Okay. No, I just made So the two successes work like this. Um, oh, interesting. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's that's a different use of that. Okay. Um, Presumably with the scene, I'm no longer angry. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're fine. Um. <laughs> I'm just trying to. But now you want to. Now you want to get birds as friends. <laughs> now you want to get birds as friends. Um, yeah. Birds are friends, not food. <laughs> oh, they're both, honestly. Um, <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, what I am trying to figure out here. Don't eat mm-hmm. pigeon. I hear pigeons quite nice sometimes. I mean, not little rat bastards that, that steal popcorn. Okay, but. cool. I just wanted to check here. Um, basically, uh, I, because the, the cheat sheet doesn't fully describe it. Um, yeah, you. so leadership can be used to gain extra dice for other people. Um, mm-hmm. You, in this case, would gain bonus effects for this scene, but... You don't right now because there are no no uses for it. Um, well, presumably uh, the bonus effects would Genev- be yeah yeah. Geneva's like plug hooked up some wires to her computer in this chip and is and is hacker montaging away. Well, the, the bonus effects are basically you can have either um, additional conditions cured or you can heal one of your own conditions. Oh, okay. But you know those don't apply in this case. That's all. Okay, you healed um, all of your zero conditions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm the best. You can actually, by the way, just so you know, in the future, um, if you happen to um, find a place where some of these skills are appropriate, for instance, um, 
lead can be used to have a stock of rolls for other characters, um, mm -hmm. basically granting them bonus dice whenever they have. Um, Charm is pretty straightforward. Investigate, uh, empathize. Sometimes some of these have bonus effects that um, that can be useful. Um, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. But um, yeah, so let's see. Um, Geneva. Yeah. Meanwhile, while all of this is going on, I've uh, oh. I, I, I'm I'm in the in the thing, the place where okay. I have the key of the. So you basically can room. use. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I'm guessing you're all back at the hideout right now. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm. I found some kind of liquid that I can use to clean off this computer chip. Okay. And and so that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um. So the question is, how do you want to approach this? What do you want to do to this computer chip? Because I mean, it is pretty, uh, it is pretty um, broad. So how do you how do you want to approach this? You can either create something new, or you can um, you can um, uh, manipulate something, like hack something, basically. Um, with the chip. Uh, not necessarily with your computer. Like, you could try to, to oh. hack into, like, a database that has information about this stuff, or you could try to, like, uh, create something, a uh, program to read the chip. Yeah, I would make something new to read the chip, because I don't think the projector room is internet connected. In fact, I don't think yeah. much is internet connected right now. That's true. Um, you are going to need some extra stuff. From this, so you don't have what it takes to do all of it right now, um, but you're pretty sure you could get it together. Uh, um, you're going to need basically some, just some additional crap, like you know, ways to, to hook up your thing. You need like a little soldering iron. You need um, you need a few more things, and you kind of you don't feel comfortable having this in your house mm -hmm. um, to try to like build like a, a more effective workshop for this, um, but. Uh, you know, if you had a soldering iron, if you had some wire, um, if you had that kind of stuff, you, you think you might be able to to jury rig something together. You've been you've been reading that that programming manual pretty carefully. I kind of want to break into the school for that. Okay, there's a workshop yeah. there, and I'm sure everything that I need, I could find in there. That's true. You could. The middle school or the high school? The I don't know what well, what are we in. The middle school the happens to have, have has some stuff too. Okay, because the high school would be more I assume more likely to have some of this stuff. Yeah, I but she doesn't know so. the middle school, so it kind of makes sense. Okay. Uh, I don't even know what the, the difference, difference is. Or uh, you know what? We, we might have somebody who's better at sneaking. That's all we have time for this session, Marissa. Where can people find you? People can find me on uh, Radical Town. That is Radical dot um, It is a Mastodon instance that I uh, manage. It's like Twitter, except there are far fewer, you know, Nazis. It's like Twitter, but gay oh. with no Nazis. <laughs> yeah. It, it, no, it's, that's exactly what it is. Uh, so if you like synthwave stuff and Twitter, but you hate uh, be constantly being trash, uh, go ahead and go to Radical Town, and I am there. Uh, same app with Cambrian underscore era. And that's Radical dot town? Radical, R-A-D-I-C-A-L dot T-O-W-N. Cleo, where can people find you? Oh, you can find me on YouTube under Zombie Cleo, and that's about it, really. Will, where can people find you? Um, you can find my work at willpennington.co.uk. It's also some short films and stuff. Lisa, where can people find you? Um, I live stream a blind playthrough of Dark Souls 3 now because I finished my Dark Souls playthrough. Uh, I do so on Mixer and Twitch simultaneously. I do that every weekend. Uh, you can connect with me and find more info about everything that I do uh, on my personal website, which is superlisa.nl. I'm Dutroid, and I stream infrequently at twitch.tv slash Dutroid. Our music for this episode is by Deerful. We are always looking to improve your experience and appreciate any feedback you can leave. Also, tell your friends. 